Franz Joseph Land, Franz Joseph Land or Francis Joseph Sland, Russian, Tr. Zimlia Franca Yosefa, is a Russian archipelago, inhabited only by military personnel, located in the Arctic Ocean and constituting the northernmost part of Arkhangelsk Oblast. It consists of 192 islands, which cover an area of 16,134 square kilometers, 6,229 square miles, stretching 375 kilometers, 233 miles, from east to west and 234 kilometers, 145 miles, from north to south. The islands are categorized in three groups, a western, central and eastern, separated by the British Channel and the Austrian Strait. The central group is further divided into a northern and southern section by the Markham Strait. The largest island is Prince George Land, which measures 2,741 square kilometers, 1,058 square miles, followed by Vilcek Land, Graham Bell Island, and Alexandra Land. 85% of the archipelago is glaciated, with large unglaciated areas being located on the largest islands and many of the smallest islands. The islands have a combined coastline of 4,425 kilometers, 2,750 miles. Compared to other Arctic archipelagos, Franz Josef Land has a high dissection rate of 3.6 square kilometers per coastline kilometer. Clarification needed, Cape Fledgley on Rudolph Island is the northernmost point of the Eastern Hemisphere. The highest elevations are found in the Eastern Group, with the highest point located on Wiener Neustadt Land, 670 meters, 2,200 feet above mean sea level. The archipelago was first spotted by the Norwegian sealers Nils Fredrik Ronbeck and Johan Petter Eidzijarvi in 1865, although they did not report their finding. The first reported finding was in the 1873 Austro-Hungarian North Pole expedition led by Julius von Peer and Karl Weyprecht, who named the area after Emperor Franz Joseph I. The islands, then under the name Fridtjof Nansen Land, were annexed by the Soviet Union in 1926 who settled small outposts for research and military purposes. The Kingdom of Norway rejected the claim and several private expeditions were sent to the islands. With the Cold War, the islands became off-limits for foreigners and two military airfields were built. The islands have been a nature sanctuary since 1994 and became part of the Russian Arctic National Park in 2012. History There are two candidates for the discovery of Franz Josef Land. The first was the Norwegian sealing vessel Spitsbergen, with Captain Nils Fredrik Ronbeck and harpooner Johan Pedereta Jarvi. They sailed northeast from Svalbard in 1865 searching for suitable sealing sites, and they found land that was most likely Franz Josef Land. The account is believed to be factual, but an announcement of the discovery was never made, and their sighting therefore remained unknown to subsequent explorers. This was at the time common to keep newly discovered areas secret, as their discovery was aimed at exploiting them for sealing and whaling, and exposure would cause competitors to flock to the site. Russian scientist N. G. Schilling proposed in 1865 that the ice conditions in the Barents Sea could only be explained if there was another landmass in the area, but he never received funding for an expedition. The Austro-Hungarian North Pole expedition of 1872-74 was the first who announced the discovery of the islands. Led by Julius von Peer and Karl Weyprecht of Austria-Hungary on board the schooner Tegethoff, the expedition's primary goal was to find the Northeast Passage and its secondary goal to reach the North Pole. Starting in July 1872, the vessel drifted from Novaya Zemlya to a new landmass, which they named in honor of Franz Joseph I, 1830-1916, Emperor of Austria. The expedition contributed significantly to the mapping and exploration of the islands. The next expedition to spot the archipelago was the Dutch expedition for the exploration of the Barents Sea, on board the schooner Willem Barents. Constrained by the ice, they never reached land. Polar Exploration Benjamin Lee Smith's expedition in 1880, aboard the Bar Kyra, followed a route from Spitsbergen to Franz Josef Land, landing on Bell Island in August. Lee Smith explored the vicinity and set up a base at Ira Harbor, before exploring towards McClintock Island. He returned the following year in the same vessel landing at Gray Bay on George Land. The explorers were stopped by ice at Cape Flora, and Ira sank on 21 August. They built a cottage and stayed the winter, to be rescued by the British vessels Kara and Hope the following summer. These early expeditions concentrated their explorations on the southern and central parts of the archipelago. Nansen's Fram expedition was an 1893-1896 attempt by the Norwegian explorer Fridtjof Nansen to reach the geographical North Pole by harnessing the natural east-west current of the Arctic Ocean. Departing in 1893, 
Fram drifted from the New Siberian Islands for one and a half years before Nansen became impatient and set out to reach the North Pole on skis with Hjalmar Johansson. Eventually, they gave up on reaching the pole and instead found their way to Franz Josef Land, the nearest land known to man. They were thus able to establish that there was no large landmass north of this archipelago. In the meantime the Jackson Harmsworth expedition set off in 1894, set up a base on Bell Island, and stayed for the winter. The following season they spent exploring, by pure chance, at Cape Flora in the spring of 1896, Nansen stumbled upon Frederick George Jackson, who was able to transport him back to Norway. Nansen and Jackson explored the northern, eastern, and western portions of the islands. Once the basic geography of Franz Josef Land had become apparent, expeditions shifted to using the archipelago as a basis to reach the North Pole. The first such attempt was conducted by the National Geographic Society-sponsored American journalist Walter Wellman in 1898. The two Norwegians, Paul Bjurvig, and Bernd Benson, stayed the winter 1898-9 at Cape Hell around Vilcek Land, but insufficient fuel caused the latter to die. Wellman returned the following year but the polar expedition itself was quickly abandoned when they lost most of their equipment. Italian nobleman Luigi Amadeo organized the next expedition in 1899, on the Stella Polera. They stayed the winter, and in February and again in March 1900 set out towards the pole, but failed to get far. Evelyn Baldwin, sponsored by William Ziegler, organized the Ziegler Polar Expedition of 1901. Setting up a base on Alger Island, he stayed the winter exploring the area, but failed to press northwards. The expedition was largely regarded as an utter failure by the exploration and scientific community, which cited the lack of proper management. Unhappy with the outcome, Ziegler organized a new expedition, for which he appointed Anthony Fiala, second in command in the first expedition, as leader. It arrived in 1903 and spent the winter. Their ship, America, was crushed beyond repair in December and disappeared in January. Still, they made two attempts towards the pole both of which were quickly abandoned. They were forced to stay another year, making yet another unsuccessful attempt at the pole, before being evacuated in 1905 by the Terra Nova. The first Russian expedition was carried out in 1901, when the icebreaker Yermak traveled to the islands. The next expedition, led by hydrologist Georgi Sadov, embarked in 1912 but did not reach the archipelago until the following year because of ice. Among its scientific contributions were the first snow measurements of the archipelago and the determination that changes of the magnetic field occur in cycles of 15 years. It also conducted topographical surveys of the surrounding area. Scurvy set in during the second winter, killing a machinist. Despite lacking prior experience or sufficient provisions, Sedolf insisted on pressing forward with a march to the pole. His condition deteriorated and he died on 6th of March. Herda was sent to explore the area, and its captain, I. Ayal Yamov hoisted a Russian iron flag at Cape Flora and proclaimed Russian sovereignty over the archipelago. The act was motivated by the ongoing First World War and Russian fears of the Central Powers establishing themselves there. The world's first Arctic flight took place in August, 1914, when Polish aviator, one of the first pilots of the Russian Navy, Jan Nagorski overflew Franz Josef Land in search of Sadov's group. Andromeda set out for the same purpose, while failing to locate them. The crew were able to finally determine the non-existence of Peterman Land and King Oscar Land, suspected lands north of the islands. The Soviet Union Soviet expeditions were sent almost yearly from 1923. Franz Josef Land had been considered Terran Elias, land belonging to no one. But on April 15, 1926 the Soviet Union declared its annexation of the archipelago. Emulating Canada's declaration of the sector principle, they pronounced all land between the Soviet mainland and the North Pole to be Soviet territory. This principle has never been internationally recognized. Both Italy and Norway protested. Norway was first and foremost concerned about its economic interests in the area, in a period when Norwegian hunters and whalers were also being barred from the White Sea, Novaya Zimlia and Greenland. The Soviet government, however, largely remained passive, and did not evict Norwegian hunting ships during the following years. Nor did the Soviets interfere when, in 1926, Several foreign ships entered the waters in search of the vanished airship Italia. Norway attempted both a diplomatic solution and a Lars Christensen financed expedition to establish a weather station to gain economic control over the islands, but both failed in 1929. Instead the Soviet icebreaker Sedolf set out, led by Otto Schmidt, landed in Tikaya Bay, and began construction of a permanent base. The Soviet government proposed renaming the archipelago Fritjof Nansen Land in 1930, but the name never came into use. 
1930 the Norwegian Bradvog expedition visited the archipelago, but was asked by Soviet authorities to respect Soviet territorial water in the future. Other expeditions that year were the Norwegian-Swedish balloon expedition led by Hans Wilhelm Sonnalman on quest and the German airship Graf Zeppelin, except for a German weather station in place during the Second World War. These were the last Western expeditions to Franz Josef Land until 1990. Soviet activities grew rapidly following the International Polar Year in 1932. The archipelago was circumnavigated, people were landed on Victoria Island, and a topographical map was completed. In 1934-35 geological and glaciological expeditions were carried out, cartographic flights were flown, and up to 60 people stayed the winters between 1934 and 1936, which also saw the first birth. The first drifting ice station was set up out of Rudolph Island in 1936. An airstrip was then constructed on a glacier on the island, and by 1937 the winter population hit 300. Activity dwindled during the Second World War and only a small group of men were kept at Rudolph Island, remaining unsupplied throughout the war. They never discovered Nazi Germany's establishment of a weather station, named Skutskraber, on Alexander Land as part of the North Atlantic Weather War. The German station was evacuated in 1944 after the men were struck by trichinosis from eating polar bear meat. Apparent physical evidence of the base was discovered in 2016. The Cold War produced renewed Soviet interest in the islands because of their strategic military significance. The islands were regarded as an unsinkable aircraft carrier. The site of the former German weather station was selected as the location of a Soviet aerodrome and military base, Nagorsky. With the advent of intercontinental ballistic missiles, the Soviet Union changed its military strategy in 1956, abolishing the strategic need for an air base on the archipelago. The International Geophysical Year of 1957 and 1958 gave a new rise to the scientific interest in the archipelago and an airstrip was built on Heiss Island in 1956. The following year the Geophysical Ernst Krenkel Observatory was established there. Activity at Tikaya Bay was closed in 1959. Because of the island's military significance, the Soviet Union closed off the area to foreign researchers, although Soviet researchers carried out various expeditions, including in geophysics, studies of the ionosphere, marine biology, botany, ornithology, and glaciology. The Soviet Union opened up the archipelago for international activities from 1990, with foreigners having fairly straightforward access. Recent history The base on Graham Bell Island was abandoned in the early 1990s. The military presence at Nagorsky was reduced to that of a border post, and the number of people stationed at Krenkel Observatory were reduced from 70 to a dozen. The archipelago and the surrounding waters was declared a nature reserve in April 1994. The opening of the archipelago also saw the introduction of tourism, most of which takes place on Russian-operated icebreakers. In 2011, in a move to better accommodate tourism in the archipelago, the Russian Arctic National Park was expanded to include Franz Josef Land. However, in August 2019, Russia abruptly withdrew its approval for a Norwegian cruise ship to visit the islands. In 2012, the Russian Air Force decided to reopen the Graham Bell Airfield as part of a series of reopenings of air bases in the Arctic. A major new base, named the Arctic Trefoil for its three-lobed structure, was constructed at Nagorsky. It can maintain 150 soldiers for 18 months and has an area of 14,000 square meters. In 2017, Russian President Vladimir Putin visited the archipelago to protect Russia's interests in the Arctic. In August 2019, a geographic expedition by Russian Northern Fleet discovered several new islands in the archipelago. They were previously buried under Vyalki Glacier until part of it melted. Geography The archipelago constitutes the northernmost part of Russia's Arkhangelsk Oblast, located between 79 degrees 46 and 81 degrees 52 north and 44 degrees 52 and 62 degrees 25 east. It is situated 360 kilometers, 220 miles, north of Novaya Zemlya and 260 kilometers, 160 miles, east of the Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard. Located within the Arctic Ocean, Franz Josef Land constitutes the northeastern border of the Barents Sea and the northwestern border of the Kara Sea. Citation needed, the islands are 900 kilometers, 560 miles, from the North Pole and 750 kilometers, 470 miles from the Yamal Peninsula, the closest point of the Eurasian mainland. The archipelago falls within varying definitions of the Asia-Europe border, and is therefore variously defined as part of Asia or Europe. Cape Flyley, situated at 81 degrees 50 north, is the northernmost point in Eurasia and the Eastern Hemisphere, and of either Europe or Asia, depending on the continental definition. Citation needed, 
It is the third closest landmass to the North Pole. The archipelago counts 191 uninhabited islands with a combined area of 16,134 square kilometers, 6,229 square miles. These stretch 375 kilometers, 233 miles, from east to west and 234 kilometers, 145 miles, from north to south. The islands are categorized in three groups, a western, central and eastern, separated by the British Channel and the Austrian Strait. The central group is further divided into a northern and southern section by the Markham Strait. Graham Bell Island is separated from the eastern group by the Severovostoknyi Strait. There are two named island clusters, Zikiland north of the Markham Sound and Bailey Azimlia to the extreme northeast. Citation needed, the straits are narrow, between several hundred meters to three kilometers, two miles, wide. They reach depths of 500 to 600 meters, 1,600 to 2,000 feet, 150 to 300 meters, 500 to 1,000 feet, below the shelf of the Barents Sea. The largest island is Prince George Land which measures 2,741 square kilometers, 1,058 square miles. Three additional islands exceed 1,000 square kilometers, 390 square miles, in size, Vilcek Land, Graham Bell Island, and Alexandra Land. Five more islands exceed 500 square kilometers, 190 square miles, Hall Island, Salisbury Island, McClintock Island, Jackson Island, and Hooker Island. The smallest 135 islands constitute 0.4% of the archipelago's area. The highest elevation is a peak on Vilcek Land, which rises 670 meters, 2,200 feet, above mean sea level. Victoria Island, located 170 kilometers, 110 miles, to the west of Alexandra Land, is administratively part of the archipelago, but the island is not geographically part of the island group and is closer to Svalbard, located 60 kilometers. 37 miles, from Kvitoya. Geology Geologically the archipelago is located on the northern edge of the Barents Sea platform, within an area where Mesozoic sedimentary rocks are exposed. The area has four units separated by regional erosion surfaces. The upper Paleozoic unit is poorly exposed and was created by folding during the Caledonian period. The lower Mesozoic unit, consisting of coastal and marine sediments from the Upper Triassic period, is present on most islands and on the bottom of the straits and consists of limestones, shales, sandstones and conglomerate. The Upper Mesozoic unit dominates in the southern and western parts, consisting of massive effusive rocks made up of basaltic sheets separated by volcanic ashes and tufts, mixed with pterogenous rocks with layers of coal. The Mesozoic tertiary unit remains mostly on the seafloor and consists of marine quartz sandstones and shales. Plate tectonics of the Arctic Ocean created basalt lavas and delirite sheets and dikes in the Upper Jurassic and Lower Cretaceous periods. The land is rising by 2.5 to 3.0 mm, 0.098 to 0.118 in, per year, due to the melting of the Barents Sea ice sheet circa 10,000 years ago. Hydrology Franz Josef Land is dominated by glaciation, which covers an area of 13,735 square kilometers, 5,303 square miles or 85% of the archipelago. The glaciers have an average thickness of 180 meters, 590 feet, which would convert to 2,500 cubic kilometers, 600 cubic miles. This would alone give a 6 millimeters, 0.24 in, eustatic rise in sea level should it melt. Large ice-free areas are only found on the largest islands, such as the 499.8 square kilometer, 193.0 square miles. Armitage Peninsula of George Land, the 493.7 square kilometer, 190.6 square miles, Colmistai Peninsula of Graham Bell Island, the 270 square kilometer, 100 square miles, Central Nive Susha of Alexandra Land, the 162.6 square kilometer, 62.8 square miles, Gonza Point of Vilcek Land and the 84.2 square kilometer, 32.5 square miles. Hayes Island. Most of the smaller islands are unglaciated. Streams only form during the runoff period from May through early September. Permafrost causes most of the runoff to take place on the surface, with streams only forming on the largest islands. The longest river is 19 kilometers, 12 miles, long and forms on George Land, while there are several streams on Alexandra Land, the longest being 8.4 kilometers, 5.2 miles. There are about 1,000 lakes in the archipelago the majority of which are located on Alexander Land and George Land. Most lakes are located in depressions caused by glacial erosion, in addition to a smaller number of lagoon lakes. 
their sizes vary from 2 square kilometers, 0.77 square miles, to 0.4 hectares, 0.99 acres. Most are only 2 meters, 6 feet 7 in, deep, with the deepest measured at 10 meters, 33 feet. The sea currents surrounding the archipelago touch eastern Svalbard and northern Novaya Zimlia. The cold Makarov current flows from the north and the Arctic current flows from the northwest, while the warmer Novaya Zimlia current flows from the south. The latter has temperatures over half a degree Celsius, 32.9 degrees Fahrenheit, while the bottom water lies below minus 1.7 degrees Celsius, 28.9 degrees Fahrenheit. The southern coastal regions of the archipelago experience currents from east to west. Average velocity is between 2 and 5 centimeters, 0.79 and 1.97 in, per second. The tidal component in coastal areas is 15 centimeters, 5.9 in, per second. Pack ice occurs throughout the year around the entire island group, with the lowest levels being during August and September. One year winter ice starts forming in October and reaches a thickness of 1.5 meters, 4 feet 11 in. Icebergs are common year-round. Climate The main forces influencing the climate are the glaciation and sea ice. At 81 degrees north the archipelago experiences 141 annual days of midnight sun, from 12 April to 30 of August. During the winter it experiences 128 days of polar night from 19 October to 23 of February. Even during summer the angle of the sun ray spreads the limited radiated energy over a large area. Further cooling is caused by the high amount of cloudiness. The sea starts to freeze in late September and reaches its annual maximum in March, at which time 95% of the sea is ice covered. The ice starts to decrease in May and suffers a major melting in June, with the minimum occurring in August or early September. During winter, high pressure weather and clear skies cause radiation loss from the ground, sending temperatures down to minus 40 degrees Celsius, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Low pressure weather gives strong winds and precipitation, with temperature spells creeping up to and above the freezing point. During shifts the temperatures can change by 20 degrees Celsius, 36 degrees Fahrenheit, within hours. Coastal stations experience mean January temperatures of between minus 20 degrees Celsius, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and minus 30 degrees Celsius, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, varying heavily from year to year depending on the degree of cycles in weather patterns. During summer the temperatures are a lot more even and average at between 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and 3 degrees Celsius, 37 degrees Fahrenheit, at Hayes Island. Fog is most common during the summer. Average annual precipitation at the coastal stations is between 100 and 150 mm, 3.9 and 5.9 in, with the wettest months being from July through September. Elevated areas can experience considerably higher precipitation. Franz Josef Land is significantly colder than Spitsbergen, which experiences 8 degrees Celsius, 14 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer winter averages, but is warmer than the Canadian Arctic archipelago. Nature The climate and permafrost limits soil development in the archipelago. Large areas are void of soil, with permafrost polygons being the most common site for soil to occur. The soil typically has incomplete soil profiles and polygonal form with rich content of iron and either neutral or slightly acidic. The brown upper humus layers have 3% organic matter, increasing to 8% in the southernmost highlands. Arctic desert soils occur on the eastern group islands, while the areas near the edge of the glaciers can give semi-bog arctic soil. The flora varies between islands, based on the natural conditions. On the least thriving islands vegetation is limited to lichen growing on stones. Vegetation typically covers 5 to 10% of the ground surface, with notable exceptions under bird colonies where it can reach 100%. Vegetation varies with the altitude, up to 120 to 130 meters, 390 to 430 feet. There is a belt of grass moss arctic desert, then moss like an arctic desert to 175 to 200 meters, 574 to 656 feet, then like an arctic desert up to 250 to 315 meters, 820 to 1033 feet, and above lifeless snow desert with occasional lichens on nunataks and snow algae on glacier surfaces. Trees, shrubs and tall plants cannot survive. About 150 species of bryophytes dominate the grassy turf, of which two-thirds are mosses and a third liverworts. The most common species are Olicomnium, Dytricum, Drepanocladus, Orthothesium, and Tomantipnum. More than 100 species of lichen are found on the island, the most common being Calaplaca, Lecanora, Lycidea, Acrolechia, and Rhinodina. There are 16 species of grass and about 100 species of algae, 
most commonly cyanophyta and diatomia. 57 species of vascular plants have been reported. The most common are arctic poppy and saxifraga, which grow everywhere, independent of habitat, with the latter's nine species being found on all islands. A common plant in wet areas is alpine foxtail and buttercups, while polar willow is common in wet areas. Allopercurus aplinus and papaver dallianum are the tallest plants, able to reach heights of 30 cm, 12 in. More than 100 taxa of single-cell pelagic algae have been identified around the archipelago, the most common being Thalassiosira antarctica and Catoceros decipiens. The bloom takes place between May and August. Of the roughly 50 species of zooplankton, calanoids dominate, with Calanus glacialis and Calanus hyperboreus constituting the greater portion of the biomass. On the sea bottom there are 34 species of macroalgae and at least 500 species of macrofauna. Most common are crustaceans such as amphipods and shrimps, polychaetes and echinoderms, such as sea bristles. The ice scouring causes there to be little life in the littoral zone, but the sublittoral zone, 2 to 25 meters, 6 feet 7 into 82 feet 0 in, is dominated by laminaria, most commonly laminaria sashturina, and red algae such as Phycodres rubens. There are 33 species of fish in the waters, none of which are abundant or commercially exploitable. The most common are polar cod, which reach lengths of 20 cm, 7.9 in, and Lipiridae. There are no endemic species within the archipelago. 41 species of birds have been documented in the archipelago, of which 14 breed. These are dominated by seabirds such as Fulmer, Kittiwake, Brunich's Guillemot, Black guillemot and little auk are common throughout the archipelago, while seven other species prefer nesting on flat tundra, common eider, purple sandpiper, arctic skua, glaucous gull, ivory gull, arctic tern and snow bunting. Some ivory gulls, little auks and Brennich's guillemots opt to spend the winter on the islands. The polar bear population of Franz Josef Land lies within the Barents Sea subpopulation, which also includes polar bears inhabiting Svalbard and the western coast of Novaya Zemlya. In 2004, the Barents Sea subpopulation was estimated at 2,650. There is also a population of Arctic fox, which typically have their territories near seabird habitats. Marine mammals Being declared as a marine mammal sanctuary, the island has rich biodiversity of rare marine mammals. Three species of seals habit the archipelago. Harp seal is the most common, although it breeds in the White Sea. Slightly less common is the bearded seal. Walruses were previously hunted dramatically reducing the formerly abundant species. They have been internationally protected since 1952 and their numbers have since been on the rise, with between 1 and 3,000 walruses living in the archipelago. The population is common with Svalbard and northern Novaya Zimlia. Minke whales, humpback whale, and beluga whales are commonly seen around the island, and less commonly orcas and narwhals, with the archipelago being located on the northern edge of their summer range. Fin whales were newly confirmed to migrate into the waters. Critically endangered cetaceans. Occasionally there are sightings of the bowhead whale. The Russian Arctic stock of this species, ranging from Cape Farewell in Greenland and Svalbard Spitsbergen areas to East Siberian Sea is considered to be the most endangered of all populations in the world. The waters around Franz Josef Land are seemingly the most important place for this stock. Human activity. Tourism travel to the archipelago is severely limited. There is no infrastructure to support tourists and the only way to reach the islands is by icebreaker, typically operating out of Murmansk. In 2012 there were only eight successful landings on the islands. A contributing factor to the low utilization is the difficulty of obtaining permissions and frequent closing of the Kola Bay to accommodate military exercises. The most frequent service is a three-week North Pole tour with Russian nuclear-powered icebreaker 50 Let Pobuty which stops by the islands en route. The most popular destinations are areas with bird cliffs and walrus colonies, such as Cape Flora on Northbrook Island and Cape Rubini on Hooker Island, as well as historical remains such as Nansen's Hut on Jackson Island. Tourists are commonly landed by helicopter. For purposes of amateur radio awards the islands count as a separate international entity. Activity by operators has become less frequent, though it does occasionally occur.